Okay. Purpose of this meeting is not to beat up people. Uh, the purpose of this meeting is to make sure that, as a company, we are incredibly focused on getting the bug count to zero. Uh, we've been moderately focused up until now. We need to be deadly focused from here on in. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Jeff Weinstein. Is he in this room? He is not in this room. Did not check in this weekend. He did not check in this weekend. He did not answer his mail, and he hasn't answered his phone yet either. His locator shows he's with the rest of the colleagues. So. <laughs> the old saying is that trying to manage programmers is like trying to herd cats. You know, you, you want them to be cats, I mean, if you like cats, I mean, because you want what's unique about that creature, but they really don't all like to go in the same direction. Where the hell does Weinstein sit, actually? In less than four years, Netscape has grown from a handful of people to over 2,000, and sometimes locating a programmer becomes yet another obstacle for the browser team to overcome. I'd say he's not in there. That would be my guess, straight out. He's not there. When's the last time he was in here? This afternoon. Okay. Oh. So, Tara and I are ready to take a hit out on him. Okay. Well, if you see when he comes back, tell him to panic and run around, and, yeah. and we're, like, doomed on Mac right now. Doomed! They, the person who's working on Mac is, like, waiting well, for data, right? You should go She's around and get, like, every person nine. in the company saying, doomed! Netscape's predicament has much to do with this man, Bill Gates, whose company, Microsoft, has made him the richest and arguably the most powerful man in the world. All right, if we could have order, we'd like to begin. Viewing Netscape's browser as a potential threat to his computing empire, Gates has moved swiftly, making his own browser free, and Netscape claims also engaging in unfair business practices to take away its customers. But we need to explore today whether you and your company have crossed the line. Or, on the other hand, whether this is just the carping of disgruntled rivals. Netscape CEO Jim Barksdale argues his company's case before the Senate. And certainly nobody here on this panel is a greater admirer of Mr. Gates or his company than I am. But we do ask that Microsoft be held accountable for some of their actions, actions that intimidate PC OEM manufacturers to use their products and exclusionary practices that prevent them from using my products. Not all companies succeed. Some fail to embrace change. This is the way technology in the free market works. The software industry's success has not been driven by government regulation, but by freedom and the basic human desire to learn, to innovate, and to excel. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away, Netscape programmers continue working around the clock in a race to meet Mozilla's release date. These guys, they tend to work very consistently, so they'll just keep working until it's done. They won't stop. They don't need food, they don't need sleep, they don't need anything. Well, okay, they take pay, but, you know, that's... <laughs> a while ago, some people from Harvard came and said, well, how do you develop software? We're writing a book. And I talked about all the things that I thought were really important, and they were just... It felt to me like they were shaking their heads going, oh, gee, he doesn't know about Principle 7, and oh, he doesn't know about Principle 22. And in some ways, they're right. You're like, I really haven't got a clue, right? I really like to err on the side of every day we wake up in the morning and say, based on what I know today, What's the best way to get to, to where, I, where we all want to go? I personally, or me and you three of us, do not have time to read all two million lines of source code to see that there are no remaining problems. We're going over here, zeroing in on Jeff Weinstein. With March 31st only days away, the team can't proceed until Jeff Weinstein, an expert on some of Netscape's most arcane code, finds time to complete the bug fixes on his list. How are you doing? Okay. All right. Well, you're officially the most doomed individual in the company, yeah. sir. Uh, this one I can close. Same with this one. Yeah, a bunch of these. Hopefully, I'll get most of it done tonight. His goal, he was just going to stay all night, and he was going to get it all done. The good news is actually, I think by about, I'm not sure if it was 9 or 11 o'clock at night, he actually was completely done. Reaching a critical milestone is cause for celebration. <laughs> I have one bug left, and it's a really, really hard one, but I'm working on it. Don't kill you. Close before 3.30. Yeah. I will close before 3.30. Good. The bug count is small. There are some bugs that are not currently closed, but most of them are like totally little annoying things that. No. Some of it stuck! Yeah. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! I'll raise the uh, 
the mighty ones. There's just been a tremendous pile of people working really hard this week to do the impossible. There's this magic phrase that Michael Toy invented, which is Zorro Boogs, um, which is it's not quite perfect, but it's perfect enough. You know, zero bugs, zero boogs. You got a spare monitor upstairs and things to be right? Uh, yes, I do have a spare monitor. This is the first big test. Will an outsider actually be able to make Mozilla work? If not, Netscape stands a good chance of missing its March 31st deadline. I thought this was going to be a huge thing. I thought it was going to be like 100, 200 people here, like all in rows, like with Soviet uh, style. Yeah. <laughs> I'm well, we're nowhere near that organized. Yeah. All right, looks like it's all there. Here we go. Yeah. Wow. All good. It's pretty simple how stuff's built. It's just there's a set of scripts that are set up to say exactly what to compile, and then they all get globbed together into Mozilla, hopefully. <laughs> Here it is. Yeah. If you get it to work, then it means anybody can get it to work. That's true. get somebody to build this quickly. And we had to do one small adjustment, and it worked! With the source almost ready to ship, Netscape must explain the significance of Mozilla to the press. Basically, what we want to do is we want to give them a little bit of the history, and then we want to go into what's actually going to happen tomorrow. The other important takeaway, then, too, from this is that this is a really exciting, cool thing. Hi, Stan Dolberg and uh, Eric Brown, please. Hey, Rich Morris Mill for Stan Dolberg. I'll transfer you now. Good afternoon, Forrester. Hi, this is Maggie Young calling from Netscape, and I have a scheduled conference call with Stan Dolberg and Eric Brown, and I just got Stan's voicemail. Netscape hopes the press will greet Mozilla with the same enthusiasm it had for the company in its early days. At 11 a.m. this morning, Netscape stock went public and Wall Street went bonkers. Initially offered at a price of $28 a share, Netscape shot up to 72 within minutes. The stock is bid up at extraordinary levels in the first couple of really days and weeks of its introduction. It is the biggest initial public offering in basically Wall Street history. Good afternoon, Forrester. Hi, this is Josh Walker. Today, less than three years after its record-breaking IPO, however, Netscape's story generates a different response. Are you there? Yep. Um, as you know, tomorrow is March 31st. Yep. So that means um, source code will be made available to the developer community, and we thought we would just um, catch you up to speed and walk you through that and see if you had some questions. Either I'm brain dead or it takes a lot of effort to communicate. And so I'm concerned that while well, you all know what it means, I'm, I'm not confident that it's coming across to the press. Right, I think those are good points. By opening up the source code, we basically extend our developer community from those folks that are inside of Netscape to hundreds of thousands of developers outside of Netscape. Yep. So you, it's no longer Netscape versus Microsoft. It's Netscape and all of the Netscape, you know, virtual community. I think there is a belief that Netscape doesn't have a position to continue to compete with Microsoft in the browser front, and that, in essence, you've given up on the browser position. This was a lot more smooth than I had originally anticipated, really. Uh, I'm still waiting for the major bump in the road that's going to happen sometime between now and tomorrow afternoon. In software development, there's always a bump in the road. We just want to hear the Apple story. I'm sure you do. They just can't quite get themselves comfortable with the patent grant or with whatever we tried to do to fix it for them. What patent? So the last thing back out of their lawyer was, gee, I don't know that we get enough protection. Mozilla has a small piece of code from Apple that has not been cleared for public license. Okay, 
We have to escalate. Hi, this is Mark Andreessen. Um, I called a few minutes ago oh, my wife. and uh, left a message. Um, I w we're trying to get, the problem is I can't get phone, the, there's no one at the Apple switchboard, so I'm having a hard time getting phone numbers for people. Awesome. You checked it in? Yeah. Uh, Hold on. 620. Uh, in order to ship Mozilla the next morning, Scott Collins is called in to replace Apple's code with his own invention. And theoretically, we believe this is possible. It's my last bug. When I complete this bug, I will be allowed to rest. So I stayed up until about 5.40 uh, this morning writing this replacement class because it made my life a living hell. I got it basically running. It's all running. It's all really good. And thank heavens uh, we got permission from Apple to ship the regular source. It's my understanding that Jamie is going to be the person that it's going to be pushing the bits up to the website at around 10 o'clock. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to be staging some different photo opportunities for the press at that time. There will be television cameras. You know, we just like hire actors to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're on TV. You're on TV. Tell me. Anyone is going to come.